everyone. Welcome back to Special Interests with Bob and Donna, Bob Van Felder and Donna DeResmo. Uh, if you've been following us, uh, you know who we are, but uh, very quickly, I'm a uh, retired teacher from New York City Board of Education uh, for 32 years with some great kids. And uh, Bob is a crime thriller novelist and outdoors writer. He's an award-winning crime thriller novelist and outdoors writer. So kudos to you. Most of the novels have to do with serial killers. Okay, okay so if you're, you're into that, his books are available on Amazon. Um, we're uh, also members of um, the Trumansburg Fish and Game Club. And Bob is a member of the New Newfield Rod and Gun Club, very new member. Uh, he's also a member of the New York State Outdoor Writers Association and the Outdoor Writers Association of America. And he is the recipient of the Lifetime Achievement Award for his fiction and his nonfiction. So he does have nonfiction books on fishing, on hunting, and writing and getting published, and bow hunting if you're if you're a bow hunter. Okay, well, we have been doing uh, some segments on the mother, the mother sources, and we've done three the already. The five French mother, mother sources. sources. Okay, we've done three, and uh, we did the Espanol sauce, we did the bechamel, and we did a tomato-based uh, sauce. So uh -huh. those videos will be in the description below. So you can click on those if you haven't seen them. Very good. By the way, the food was excellent. Oh, <laughs> he's, a good, he's a good cook. He's a good cook. Um, today, we're doing the fourth sauce, which is a velouté. Am I pronouncing that correctly? Mm -hmm. Velouté sauce. And it sounds French. Is it French? Yes, it is. It is French. Okay. These are, this is uh, one of the five French mother, mother sauces. sauces. Okay. The five that we'll be dealing with, they're French. You're, a, you're all French. Okay. And the velouté sauce is going to go over a seared tuna steak. A pan, pan, a pan, pan seared, seared. A tuna steak. So well, you better you better take better notes, Donna. <laughs> pan seared. Okay. It's not going in the oven. It's the top of the oven. Okay, so um, it's interesting to note that uh, whatever Bob uh, talks about or teaches about, he loves, loves to teach. He taught uh, college uh, English and various adult ed courses at the college level for about 13 years. He knows about serial killers, trust me, been, been studying them for many, many years. He knows about boat, boats and he knows about fishing and he's been doing boating and fishing since he was a, oh. a, a kid. We don't want to tell him how many how many no, how many years. Don't want to date myself. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, as a result of his uh, attending the Robert Shulman serial killer trial uh, back in uh, I believe it was ninety eight ninety seven ninety eight in, in, 98, Riverhead. in uh, Riverhead Long Island where we reside, uh, he met up with the director of the Kirby Forensic Psychiatric Center on Wards Island, which is a hospital for the criminally insane, and uh, the uh, defendant in that trial uh, spent some time there. So uh, the director requested that Bob go there and lecture about his experiences attending that trial, a trial for every day, Monday through Friday, for 15 months. It was a very, very long, long, long trial. I lectured um, psychiatrists and students at the uh, center. Okay, so you know about you know about serial killers and that was a very very interesting lecture by the way and he got the cook's tour of the hospital which is a whole other story. <laughs> they're the scare uh, serial killers, they're the scariest people on the face of the planet. They really are. You just don't know. Uh, they would, uh, if, if he was a neighbor, He'd help you mend your fence. You would never know. Years later, you get comfortable. You know one another. Oh, Don and I are going out for uh, the mo a movie and dinner tonight. Would you mind watching the kids? You wouldn't hesitate to ask mm -hmm. them. That, that kind of... Uh, Mentality, yeah. They're, they're intelligent. They're, they're, they know how not to get caught. 
And that's the uh, that's the issue, and there are many of them across some the Some of them are highly intelligent. You know, there's you can't even lock in. Uh, some of them are highly intelligent. Some of them are intelligent. Some of them are not terribly bright. So Bob is in the midst of writing a uh, crime thriller, which is centers around the Gilgo Beach body discovery here on Long Island, because we do have a serial killer roaming around. Or more than one. Or more than, or more than one who has not been caught yet. And that was uh, the result of the, the search for uh, a Shannon Gilbert. And searching for her, they found 10 other, ten ten other, other bodies, bodies, including a toddler. And, and that was uh, in the Gilgo Beach area. Uh, they also discovered bodies in Manorville. Manorville. Three bodies in Manorville. Which is a town uh, close Close to, as a matter of fact, close to us. So. And one of the uh, body parts uh, was in Manorville. Another body part of that same female wound up in Gilgo Beach. So that tells you something. So the serial killer antagonist in his new in his new book is into cooking. So this is this is the tie-in here. So you're going to have to going to have to be patient. Um, Bob is going to share with you an excerpt from the book right now, and then we will be going into the kitchen to take a look at the ingredients that we'll need right. to do this pan-seared tuna steak with veloute sauce. Right. We won't be uh, initially. We'll be doing the uh, sauce, and then later on we'll to go uh, over the dish. We'll go over. Okay. Great. Right. All right. So I'll leave it to you. Okay. So. In the other shows we did, and Donna will be putting a, uh, a I'll description, put, I'll put the, the link know, in the description. A link where to go. Uh, we covered, uh, let's see, I think we did uh, excerpts from three chapters. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. this will be an excerpt from another chapter. Where this is jumping way, way, way ahead. This isn't the chapter 15, but what we want to do with is home in on uh, serial killers in this segment and uh, you'll, you'll get a bit of an insight into the serial killer um, as well as the um, source that we'll be creating. Okay. So again, what did they say? Without further ado. Without further ado. Okay. Go ahead. It was late afternoon when the bushy-haired man entered the basement area. He walked over and unstrapped Veronica from the chair, removing bindings from her feet and hands. Are we ready to begin our velute, velute, I'm having trouble velute. with the velute, velute sauce. sauce, Veronica. Yes, sir. You know what? Veronica shook her pretty head. You don't have to call me sir or mister or master any longer, all right? What should I call you? Call me anything but late to dinner, the man <laughs> joked around playfully. Veronica feigned a smile and forced a little laugh. She was not in a playful mood, having been strapped to the metal chair for what seemed like several hours. She stood and rubbed her arms and legs, feeling the circulation slowly returning to her limbs. Seriously, I've been thinking, Veronica, you can call me Cap. Veronica paused. Cap? Yes, Cap. Short for Captor, the man giggled and absolutely roared with laughter. It's fitting, is it not? He added when he finally caught his breath. Veronica said nothing. Cap went on about the meal they would be preparing together. In the other sources that we did, I gave the reader some background information on the history, the origin of these sauces, but I won't address that now. We'll get a little bit deeper here. You'll prepare the Velouti sauce this evening, right down to the room, while I prepare the fish. I had a nice yellow fin flown in from Freeport. Not Freeport, Long Island, of course, but from Freeport, Texas. That's why you and I are going to enjoy a fresh tuna steak in the middle of February. It happens to be 
the middle of February mm -hmm. right now. I spared no expense. You have no idea the work involved in catching tuna this time of year. It's all about weather and windows of opportunity. It's all about big boats, makos, sea crass, bertrams. Yellowfin tuna are the coveted prize. Three fish per day, per boat, per man. That's it. Blackfin tuna, grouper, and many other species are next in line. The gulf is where they nail them. The fish feed voraciously under the bright, bright lights of those deep water, offshore, oil rig platforms. I guess you want me to call you Cap, my captain, because you know a lot about boats and fish, she said flatteringly. Cap smiled. Nah, I want you to call me Cap because you're still my prisoner. But you are going to let me go as you promised, yes? Two more sauces to go, Veronica, two more, and then you're free. We won't be making as much velote as we did the bechamel because we won't be preparing derivative dishes like the fettuccine alfredo covered with clams and shrimp that we enjoy or, mac or the macaroni and cheese or transforming the bechamel into a Mornay sauce, he added. Uh, what was it? Cheddar cheese? You absolutely love my chicken Mornay casserole too, remember? And do you remember that I told you that you are making me fat? Now this gal who has been abducted, kidnapped by this madman, she, uh, the victims are killed off almost immediately, a day or two days. She's been with him for two weeks. She's been a psych major uh, in college, Hunter College, Psych 243, for those of you who are familiar. Um, so maybe some of her knowledge is keeping her alive mm -hmm. at this point. And I'll just repeat this last line for transition here. And do you remember that I told you that you're making me fat? couple of pounds, maybe. You'll live. Veronica prayed he meant that in a literal sense. Prayed that he would soon release, release her. Prayed that she would get to hug her parents and they would take her into their loving arms. That she tacitly pray for and forgive her father for having an affair, which she now believed was true. The serial killer imparted this information before he grabs anyone. He knows virtually everything there is to know about the family, about the victim he's about to apprehend. Veronica truly prayed like she had never prayed before. Prayed to God that she would live. May I go to the bathroom, please? Of course you may. Veronica stiffly crossed the room, heading toward the alcove. Moments later, she flushed the toilet, washed and dried her hands thoroughly, then exited the alcove. Cap inspected her hands closely. Good girl, he said approvingly. Toward evening, Veronica was busy at Cap's basement kitchen stove, melting two tablespoons of butter in a saucepan, adding an equal amount of flour in small batches, whisking away till the mixture was free of any lumps. Yes, free. Veronica craved to be free, wishing she could vanish just as easily as those tiny little lumps. She added two cups of cold fish stock that Cap had prepared well ahead of time, unlike the hot milk added when she had prepared the bechamel sauce, then whisked away some more until the liquid became smooth and silky. The roux was almost ready, reducing it a bit more at a slow simmer. Cap stepped 
over to inspect. Looks perfect, Veronica. The captor praised his captive. Cap picked up a utensil and dipped it into the pan. Yes, look how it clings, then slowly leaves a film upon the spoon. Perfect. Cap tasted the sauce. Wonderful. Go with a quarter of a page here, so hang in. Veronica was, of course, pleased that Cap was pleased. God forbid if he wasn't. Now, we should have cert now we could have certainly embellished the sauce if we wanted. First chopping up a shallot and cooking it in melted butter until translucent, adding little tarragon and or Dijon mustard, salt and pepper to taste, finishing up with a half cup of dry white wine. Again, the possibilities are endless, but the pan-seared rare tuna we'll be enjoying momentarily already contains some of those ingredients. I'll also put together a red potato and green bean salad. You'll positively flip. If it were May, I'd be doing the tuna steaks on the grill outside. The meal was colorful and absolutely sensational. However, Rob, Veronica's appetite was curbed purely by her excitement, believing that she was but one sauce away from freedom. She ate whatever she could solely to keep her captor happy. Happy. Okay, so... What a nut. What a nut. Oh, oh, oh boy. boy. See, the tormenting is very, very important. If they don't, uh, oh, they'll get off on inflicting pain. But this serial killer likes to torment in a different way before... He may or may not do what I've um, imparted here. So, what do you say okay. we uh, so we'll head into, the, into kitchen the kitchen and we'll see you in a bit. Okay, Donna, you'll swing around here and let's take a look at the ingredients that we'll be uh, using. Uh, we have here coarse pepper, sea salt, fine crystals, butter red potatoes that I sliced into quarters and Donna you can tell them how hard this was to make <laughs> what are these pine nuts okay and hold off one second there let me just take a look at this um, I've got a half a cup of, of, um, of the pine, uh, pine nuts and that's the equivalent of uh, two ounces net weights two ounces so half a cup that will be fine. So Donna, what did you do here? I'm Just put it in a pan and keep stirring until they get a little bit of brown. That's, That's it. it. Very, very simple. Very simple. Okay, and over here we have some basil. Beautiful smelling basil. And then we had nice long string beans, but I had Donna cut these into one inch, approximately one inch pieces. We have some lemon zest. And we have some garlic. And then... Donna, Donna loves this. What's your favorite cheese for Donna? Parmigiano Reggiano. Parmigiano Reggiano. Don't forget the olive oil. And uh, oh, Extra not just E V O O Evo. What does that stand Extra for? Extra virgin olive oil. Okay. The best. And then we have the cheese that I mentioned, and some white wine, and we have. Um, uh, well, let's see, um, half a pound of tuna. That's uh, approximately half a pound of tuna. And uh, you can see that it's been salted and peppered on both sides and the edges too. Mm -hmm. Now you'll see aluminum foil underneath here. I'm not cooking it on here. What I'll be doing is to transferring it over to, and this is a must, a cast iron pan. And uh, then if you had seen one of, uh, one of our other shows, again, Donna will have that link on the other, for the other shows. We have our in the oven or in the pan uh, the chef alarm thermometer by, thermometer. by Thermo. Thermo Works. 
And this is a must-have item for precision cooking. And it works great. It works fantastically. It really does. And we'll be doing many dishes down the pike, even well beyond when we get beyond our um, uh, five French sauces and other um, sauces. So our next step, we're going to take a break from this. I'm going to set up. We'll be um, coming back and cooking this probably uh, tomorrow sometime. So I'll be putting, I'll be covering this and putting this back in the uh, fridge. Okay. Ah, one more thing. Almost missed a beat. Step over here to the refrigerator and we'll be making a fish stock and I'll be covering on how to do this. Very, very simple. This is some uh, frozen porgies and some other fish that we've had and we're going to be making a beautiful fish stock for our fish tuna dish. Okay, we uh, made our fish stock using the chinois and why such a big pot? We need a deep uh, stock pot for this funnel here. Okay, I just have a little bit. You can see I Put some in a mason jar here, some of the leftover have a little bit in here, what we'll be using. We saw the, um, the porgies, so I defrosted them, took about 12 hours. I wanted to defrost in the refrigerator naturally, and uh, then I cooked them up in a stock pot. And after they were cooked, and it, uh, the porgies have such a nice, sweet flavor to it. So um, it went into the chinois. I drained it in here and I'm not going to uh, throw out. I'll maybe save this for a soup or something special. haven't decided yet. But anyways, this is what we're going to be um, doing here. Um, we talked about a cast iron skillet. That's a must for this uh, tuna, and it'll make some nice lines on here. We're not going to be doing it. We're going to get this uh, cast iron pot nice and hot. I used a little bit of cooking spray, Pam, on here. And I'm going to turn this on to a medium high. And then I'm going to transfer when it gets to... Um, Nice medium high temperature. I'll transfer the tuna steak onto the cast into the cast iron pan. And Donna, if you'll swing over here, you can see what the temperature of our meat is right now of our tuna steak. It's uh, 66.2 degrees. Um, before we turned on this camera, it was about 60. Right, Donna? It's about 60 degrees, and we want to bring this up to about 125. First time I'm doing it um, with uh, the cast iron pan and the thermometer, so it'll be kind of an experiment here, but you can't unring a bell. So what we'll do is we're going to set it for, um, oh, I'm going to look at it when it reaches um, 125 degrees. If we have to go to 130 for rare, then we'll do that. And okay. tell the folks what kind of thermometer you're using. Okay, this is a Chef Alarm by Thermoworks. And we covered this yesterday. Okay, there's the, uh, the casing for it. And uh, Again, let's see what I'll be doing here. So, we're using a cast iron skillet. We've, uh, yesterday, or today rather, um, I, well, I think it was last night, yeah, because I set this in. I put some mm -hmm. salt and pepper on the front, on the top and the bottom, and around the sides also. Salt and pepper, and this way that, that salt will get into this meat 
drain that moisture out. And um, let's see. In a medium pot, we used those potatoes that I showed yesterday. I did all of this ahead of time. And the recipe calls for some of this I made up, some of it I uh, uh, took from uh, a cookbook, embellished on my own based on my experience and of what our palate is, what we like. So we took the potatoes, I cut them into quarters I mentioned, and I covered them in uh, with cold water and I brought them um, to a boil for approximately simmering for 10 minutes. Um, then I added the beans for four minutes. And let's see what we have here. I'm keeping this warm here. Might need a glove. I do. And this is our, our potatoes and the beans. Okay, and that'll stay nice and warm there for when we're ready to put this together. Um, let's see. While the potatoes were cooking, Donna used our food processor over here and she pureed the basil that we had, we showed you yesterday, the roasted pine nuts which Donna took care of, the garlic, um, the lemon zest, half a teaspoon of uh, salt and uh, about a half a teaspoon of pepper. Uh, with the machine on, Donna poured in the extra virgin olive oil, about a quarter of a cup, right Donna, I would say? Yes? Yes. Okay. And then we transferred the pesto to a large bowl. Well, not a large bowl in this case, it's just the going to be for the two of us. Enough. And then she stirred in the cheese. What kind oh, of cheese? Here we go with the Parmigiano Reggiano. Okay. Very important, very important. So we'll pan sear those steaks when I think this is ready here. Let's see how we're doing. Now I'm going to bring this up a little bit. And we'll come back here when this is hot and I have this uh, set up. Okay? Okay, let's get our balute sauce uh, started here. So I'm going to melt some butter. Two tablespoons is what I have here. Put that in. And when that melts down, we're going to add our flour in small batches, just a little bit at a time. And just like we did with the bechamel in another show, we want to get those lumps out so we get a nice, smooth, silky uh, texture. Okay, so let this melt down and we'll come back to this in a second when you see uh, that we're midway with this flour. Okay, you can see that we're ready up to 92, 93 degrees already. And uh, I'm going to move over here. The butter is melted. You can hear the tuna sizzling away. And I'm going to start adding our flour here, a little bit at a time. A little bit at a time here. Okay, so that alarm went over at 1.30 and uh, I flipped this over, I flipped our tuna steak over and I'm going to give this another couple of minutes, okay? Okay, this is about finished. What I did after we melted down the uh, butter and flour, I added about a cup 
little less than a cup actually of the um, fish fish stock. And here we go. I'm going to shut this off. The dish has been put together. See how we arranged our potatoes. Take a look at the meat foam uh, here. This is um, toward medium, but we want it rare, and that's certainly mm -hmm. what we have in here. We have our beans, the uh, pesto, and now I'm going to pour this over the rest of the dish. And we'll enjoy this in a second here. But let's not uh, miss this very important, <laughs> not ingredient, but I did put a little bit of white wine in with the uh, chicken and the broth. And the velote sauce. And uh, <laughs> for the velote sauce. And here's that important item. Can't cook without it. So that's it. We'll be doing a holiday sauce down the pike, so stay tuned for that. Yes, and uh, feel free to comment and share. And please subscribe to our channel, Special Interests with Bob and Zana. And thanks for watching. Bye-bye, guys.